Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. In the diversity of humanity, we find numerous tribes, peoples, and ethnicities, all part of the same human race, with ethnic variations among the descendants of Noah. In this video, I wish to present to you the origin of a biblical character mentioned in the Bible, although not by name but by her existence. I am here to share the story of Noah's wife, the matriarch of humanity, the mother of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Please watch until the end, and if you find the content enlightening, share it with those who like you, seek more knowledge in the scriptures. That said, let's continue with our series on the matriarchs of humanity, which concludes with this video. The Origin of Noah's Wife, the Matriarch of Humanity In the last few videos of this series, I discussed other matriarchs of humanity, namely the wives of Noah's three sons. I started the series by talking about Shem's wife, who is mentioned as Sedekitelbab in the Book of Jubilees. In this series, we are considering some information from ancient Jewish traditions, such as those found in the Book of Jubilees. The central point of the story of Noah's wife is intricately connected to the biblical account of the universal flood. She, along with her husband Noah, played a crucial role in the narrative of the flood, which is one of the most iconic and well-known stories in the Bible. Noah, a righteous man in the eyes of God, received the divine charge to build an ark to shelter himself, his family, and a pair of every animal species during the great flood that God was about to send as a punishment to corrupt humanity. Noah's wife was not a mere spectator in this epic construction. She was his dedicated partner and supported him unconditionally during the building of the ark, which was a monumental task. The Bible does not specify the details of her involvement, but it is safe to assume that she had an active role in preparing the ark, taking care of the family and the animals to be saved, and sharing Noah's faith and determination. Together, they faced skepticism and ridicule from others as they built a gigantic vessel in preparation for the impending flood. They personify unity, trust, and perseverance in the face of adversity. After the devastation of the flood, Noah's wife continued to play a crucial role in the history of humanity. Along with Noah, she was one of the only eight people who survived the waters that covered the earth. With the flood finally dissipating and the ark resting on Mount Ararat, Noah's wife and her family emerged as the only human beings left in a world that needed to be repopulated. She and Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, who became the progenitors of different ethnic groups and nations. Thus, Noah's wife played a crucial role in the continuity of the human lineage, contributing to the diversity of cultures that emerged after the flood. This narrative underscores the importance of family and the continuity of life in a new era of human history. Noah's sons, with their mother, became the pillars of a new society, spreading to different regions of the world and playing significant roles in the biblical narrative. For instance, the descendants of Shem are the ancestors of the Hebrew people in the Middle East, while Ham is associated with several African nations, and Japheth is seen as the forebear of Indo-European and Asian groups. Noah's wife, therefore, is indirectly linked to all these lineages and the rich tapestry of human history. We live in a diverse world with different peoples, ethnicities, colors, and traits, but we all share a single similarity that unites us, we belong to the same race, the Adamic race. We are all children of Noah and his wife, and this is the story that connects us as human beings. There are no distinctions of race, we are all part of the same human family. It is truly fascinating to note that the only differentiation among peoples lies in ethnic matters, with each group being part of the lineages of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. As we know, the wives of Noah's sons, Shem's wife, known as Sedekitelbab, Ham's wife, called Neltamach, and Japheth's wife, named Adetanesis or Adetanesh, were all in Noah's ark and survived the world's destruction caused by the flood. In addition to these three women, we also had Noah's own wife. But what was the name of Noah's wife? Once again, according to the Book of Jubilees, 
a source of ancient Jewish traditions addressing various biblical matters and ancient questions, the name of Noah's wife was Emzara. Emzara was indeed Noah's wife and the mother of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. It is interesting to note that there are variations in the name of Noah's wife in some ancient Jewish traditions. For example, in the Book of Jubilees, she is called Emzara. It is worth remembering that the Book of Jubilees dates back to over 700 years before Christ. On the other hand, in other ancient Jewish traditions, such as in Jewish rabbinic literature, specifically in Midrash Rabbah Genesis, also known as Bereshit Rabbah or Midrash Genesis Rabbah, this figure is addressed. Midrash Rabbah Genesis is one of the most significant works in Jewish rabbinic literature and is part of a collection of midrashim that provides commentary, interpretations, and stories related to biblical texts, with a special focus on the book of Genesis, Bereshit in Hebrew. Midrash Rabbah Genesis is, in fact, a collection of homilies, sermons, and reflections that focus on specific themes and passages from the book of Genesis, the first book of the Hebrew Bible. These interpretations aim to delve deeper into and explain the meaning of the stories and characters in Genesis from a Jewish and religious perspective. This text is an important part of rabbinic literature and has played a fundamental role in Jewish tradition throughout the centuries. According to the Midrash Rabbah Genesis, Nama, the daughter of Lamech and the sister of Tubal Cain, is identified as Noah's wife. This is the perspective of Jewish rabbinic literature. Additionally, the Jewish commentator Rashi, in his commentary on Genesis, chapter 4, verse 22, also lists Nama as Noah's wife. However, the book of Jasher, an additional source, states that Noah's wife's name was Nama and that she was the daughter of Enoch. This discrepancy in traditions, where in one version she is the daughter of Enoch and in the other she is the daughter of Lamech and the sister of Tubal Cain, is a notable difference between interpretations. It is more likely that we consider the name of Noah's wife as Emzara, due to the Book of Jubilees being an ancient and fascinating compendium of Jewish traditions. I would like to hear your opinions in the comments, was Noah's wife's name really Emzara, as suggested by Jubilees, or was it Nama, as mentioned in the Book of Jasher? Thanks to the three sons of Emzara and Noah, the world was repopulated soon after the Great Flood, resulting in various ethnicities descending from Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Remember the saying, we are all brothers. This statement is true, as all people share the same genetic heritage, being all descendants of Amzara and Noah, according to the sacred scriptures. I firmly believe in this truth, despite there being skeptics who rely solely on science and the theory of evolution. I respect all perspectives, but my faith lies in the sacred scriptures, the Bible, and the Book of Jubilees, which offer a rich lineage for all of humanity, something truly beautiful. In addition to Emzara and Nama as names for Noah's wife, in other ancient traditions, such as Mandine literature of uncertain origin, we find references to her as Nureda or Hanroeda. There are various spellings for this name. Whether Nama, Emzara, Nureda, or Hanroeda, the importance of this woman to humanity was remarkable. I sincerely hope that all of you have enjoyed the knowledge shared in this video, including the extra-biblical references mentioned. I thank all those who have followed this series on the Matriarchs of Humanity produced by our channel. We will continue to explore lesser-known characters in the scriptures in the near future. If you have any suggestions, please feel free to share them in the comments, as it greatly assists us in our studies. May everyone be under the protection of God. See you soon.